Hi, welcome back to EMP Tech Group. My name is George Hopper, and today we are going to continue our video series on Bartender and its companion applications. Last video, we discussed and showed how to set up Bartender Print Station. And today we're going to talk about an actual real world um, example of what we did for a customer using Bartender with a few more added features than just putting text in a, in a barcode on a label. This helped in a couple ways. Um, number one, they did not have to go into the actual format anymore to change anything. And it did it at print time. So now everything's in the exact same position every time. Um, with the conditional printing of this text based off of this logo, you can't have the wrong one there anymore. So I can't have the Ohio logo with the Indiana text. And I just didn't have to be in this format anymore. So I can now use Bartender's print station application, which we couldn't do in the past. So here's the label we ended up coming up with. Pretty simple label, nothing around it. So this label has two placeholders for logos or for images, one here, one here. And then we've got actually two different text fields here. Um, they're actually stacked on top of each other right now. So here's the Jeffersonville one. And there's the Ohio one. And both of these are conditionally printed. They'll print when the state logo equals Ohio or state logo change that for Ohio for Cincinnati. There we go. Or when the state logo equals Indiana. Now this label also includes a database tie-in for all these numbers in yellow. So those are dynamically added at print time based off of the type, which is more of a part number for them. And so here's how we did this. And here's the data entry form that we came up with. The bridal stock number is our part number and that determines what gets pulled off the database. Uh, the order number is just something that they enter in at print time. I think this is all kind of self-explanatory. Then there are three drop downs. This material one is actually only two options. You get nylon or polyester. And so the source is just embedded or static data that we typed in here. I could add a third. Um, I keep it the same format here. And then the item value is the same. These two are actually the two that are really kind of cool. So for these, uh, the source is a file name and a folder. Oh, correct. So uh, I actually have two different folders set up here for this demo, a customer logo and a state logo folder. So for this, you just come down here in the drop down, pick file names and folder, tell it what folder all your file names are in, and it's gonna pop it up like this. So all these display texts are the actual image file names before the extension. So as you can see, these are bitmap, JPEG, JPEG, JPEG. Whatever the extensions are, we can hide them because we don't really need to see them. So that's what the user is going to see and get to choose from. It's actually quite a long list. The item value is what we're going to use on our name data source to dynamically populate that label. So we actually want to use the full file path for that value because we need to tell bartender, this is exactly where that logo is. Go find it and put it in, in place. The same thing for the state logo, file names in a folder. Now I will tell you, if we don't check mark this box and I'll leave this one unchecked, we're going to get an error message at print time and I'll show you what happens. So this is our data entry form. Here's our label. So let's go ahead and just test print it. We're going to test print three labels. So here's our data entry form. So this bridal stock number just self populates from the last time you, you did anything with it, but it is fully changeable. 
serial number. Let's start at the serial number 10. Let's say we printed a few earlier. 18 feet, 5 inches. The material, we'll say, is cotton. You can either go down through here. You can start typing Fs to kind of scroll through the F list. State, we'll say Indiana. So here's the error I was talking about. Because we didn't use the full file, ex file name for the extension, it doesn't know where to find state logo pick. File wasn't found. It just doesn't know where to find Indiana. But we can correct that here in a minute. And as you can see here, we have three labels that we're going to print. Everything that is on them. Here's our serial number, which would be the order number and the serial number combined. That's what they asked for, our length 18 feet 5 inches. We picked the fulcrum logo. And there's no state logo because it couldn't find it. And also because of that, nothing, nothing conditionally printed because it, it didn't equal anything, didn't equal the right value. So let's go back in and fix that real quick. So let's go back to state logo. Use the full file path, please. Now then. Preview number three. I'll start it at, let's say, 25. Let's make it five, oh, excuse me. Five feet nine inches. Um, we're going to choose the E. Sorry. Another thing you can do is just drop down the list, find what you want, click on it. And go Indiana again, and we'll preview. You no know, error messages, messages this time because I found everything. So now the state logo is there because it knows where to look. Um, all our data that we entered has changed. Logo is there, and now the correct text box is there. Let me do one more, and we'll choose Ohio this time. There's our state, just so we can show you that it does actually change. Okay, so here's the preview of that label. As you can see, start off at one, which is the default. I didn't enter anything else, so they're just the kind of the sample values of nothing or zero. Our logo, the Ohio logo, now this has changed to Cincinnati, Ohio. So pretty cool, you can actually dynamically choose pictures and do conditional printing through the data entry form. And once again, because they're doing that, they can use the print station application that comes with bartender. So I appreciate you watching this video today. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at the MP Tech Group. Also, please um, like and subscribe to the video channel. And as they always say, click on the bell for notifications so you get the latest video. And as a reminder, our website is emptechgroup.com. Quite a bit on there, tips, videos, links to service and support requests along with sales. So again, thanks for watching and have a great day.